Angling is one of the biggest participation sports in the whole of the world. And carp fishing, well that of course is the trendiest. Competition carp fishing is a massive part of the scene all across the globe. And there's one competition that everybody wants to win. It's this one, the World Carp Classic. In its 20th year, the World Carp Classic has blazed the trail for professional competition carp angling. It started out in 1998 here at the magnificent Lac de Medine in France. Since then, it's moved around the globe. It's been to Bolsena in Italy, Nova Malinska in the Czech Republic, and various other lakes in France, such as the Orient and also Amons. It's been won by some of the biggest names in angling, and for its 20th celebratory anniversary, it's back here at its spiritual home, Lac de Medine. There have been champions from all over the world, Holland, Poland, Belgium, Czech Republic, USA, Romania, and multiple times from England. And it attracts people from all around the globe, because quite frankly, this is the one they all want to win. No, oh, it's a great event, you know, it's the biggest event uh, for, the, for 20 years already. So now we're very proud to have all these guys here. Austria, not won it yet? Not already, but I think now it's time. This is the year? Yes, yeah, maybe. absolutely. What do you think, guys? Are you going to win it? Yeah! yeah! You've done this a few times, Lee. What do you like about it? It's just the unknown, really, Rob. It's, yeah, you just, every year changes, doesn't it? I'm sure, I'm sure you, you and I, but it does. Every year changes. Last year, the boys were against the elements. Unfortunately, wasn't here last year. Last year, the boys against the elements, and uh, this year's, look at it. It's beautiful. What do you think about the size of the event, then? Oh, massive. Really, like, you know, top, top event. That I'm, you know, so for the first time ever in my life to be in such a big event. So, everything organised up to detail. Can't complain, like, absolutely. Inspiring. Guys, you've travelled an awful long way to be with us. Yeah, no, we have done uh, 23,000 kilometres, so it's quite a long way, and uh, we, we um, left New Zealand on Monday and arrived in uh, Amsterdam on Wednesday. What do people at home think about you? Do they think you're mad fishing for carp all this way? Yeah, definitely, but, you know, it's, it's, we grow the sport in New Zealand and Australia, so, you know, it's, it's growing every year, more and more people, you know, join the carp, the carp world, so, yeah, it's awesome. Well, that's it, the World Carp Classic 20th edition is underway. What an absolutely fantastic atmosphere here behind us as the crowds and throngs walk through. The train is carrying the defending champions. In the front carriage, we have Benji, Tim and Lee bringing the trophy back to put it onto the podium in readiness for the draw this year. It's a magnificent spectacle out here at Medine. It always is. Anglers from around the world coming together to celebrate our fantastic sport. 24 different nations are represented at the moment. That is absolutely brilliant. From as far away as Japan, from South Africa, from New Zealand, from Canada, and of course, all across Europe too. Brilliant, brilliant spectacle. As with any fishing competition, one of the most important parts is the draw because it's this that will decide where the anglers will be living for the duration of the competition. Now, all around the lake, there are marked pegs and it's from here that the anglers will have to do all of their fishing. Now, when they registered in, they picked a number out of a draw bag and this decided what their draw order was. If they got one, they picked first. If they got 120, they picked last. Everyone has their own favorite peg or area that they would like to fish. Well, 52, there's some nice ones. 83 I'd like, um, four I'd like. There's big fish been coming out of four. You know, there's big fish you'd have to. You know, there's a few good ones in here. There's plenty of oh no's gone, which is what you're looking for. The match is 112 hours long and they take enough kit to survive on the bank for the whole duration. Up for grabs is a fantastic title and a rather large check. And this is lottery time, so it's eyes down to see who is going to get put where. 
After the random draw comes the test of knowledge and skill. We're happy with the bag, so let's see what the next week will be. So competition day one is now upon us and the first thing everyone's got to do is they've got to get out to their pegs. Now, Medine is a really, really big lake. In fact, it's 46 kilometers all the way around. So the guys that are on the outside, they can drive. There is, of course, two islands. And the guys that are out on the islands, they've got to get there by boat. And you can see there's an enormous logistical operation going on behind me as the guys pack all of the kit that they need for five days into their boats and transfer out to their places. They take everything, food, supplies, water, of course, all of their fishing kit. And you can see behind me, some of these boats are absolutely laden right up to the top. Now, it takes a fair few hours to get everything out there, and the competition will be starting at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So we're just heading out across the waters of Medine now to an area that is known as the dark side. Now it's the dark side for a couple of reasons. One, because it's always in shade. And two, because you know what? It's pretty difficult to get through. It's like bandit country. And the only way you can get there is on one of these. Now the logistical operation to get these guys into place with all of their kit goes on for hours and hours and hours. But they're now in place. The competition is about to start and we're heading over to the peg that the defending Five, champions four, are in. Three, two, one. The 20th anniversary event of the World Cup Classic is now officially started. So with the competition underway, the anglers got the rods in the water and hoped to catch an early carp. We caught up with 2016 champions Jan Dadak, Carol Nickel, and Jakob Kumster, who'd drawn a really fancy peg. We've actually decided to, to do it to do it slightly differently, as we know as the competition starts, everyone is wanting to put the rods out, you know, catch the first fish and everything. But as we are, you know, on the end of the bay, what we've decided to, to do is to leave, leave it quiet and, you know, to wait for several hours now until, you know, every everyone goes out in the boats. They will be like, you know, going out, trying to find places and uh, all that. So a lot of disturbance on the water as the fish will get like, you know, spooked out from this side as, as all the boats, you know, go out, they will be pushed to to the end, basically. We keep the door open for, for them to, to come to, to our water and, you know, feel comfortable there, you know, and as, as it all settles down, we will go, go out, you know, quietly and uh, start to look for, for places and, and fish for them. So, let's see. While some anglers were playing a tactical waiting game, others were straight in there and got out onto the water aiming to get their baited spots established before it got dark. Well, it's just dropping dark now. And just look at that sunset behind me. What an absolutely beautiful evening it is. And we just start to hear the reports of the first fish that's been caught. Now it's out on the island. It's only a small one. And the first flickerings of those fish starting to feed on Medine are now coming through. No doubt there will be fish caught through the night. And we'll be back tomorrow to tell you exactly who's got them and how big they are. Premier poisson de Medine pour nous. Équipe française. This is the first Medine fish for us, Team France. It was caught on a rod on its own next to the weed. Le dos d'herbier de Potamos qui est très bon pour la très bon pour la pêche. On y a déposé la canne et. It was very good cast and it was a lucky one. It's the first one, but let's hope it continues. And I like to say good luck to the rest of our French teammates. Come on, let's go. It wasn't long after the report of that first fish for the French team that another report came in, this time from a Spanish team in Peg 47, saying that they'd caught an enormous common carp of 21.2 kilograms, that's 46 and a half pounds. And so they kept coming through the night and into dawn, and 10 teams worked their way onto the leaderboard. The prize of the night, though, went to the Anglo-German pairing of Thomas Muller and Stephen Freeland in Peg 84. Good night last night. A couple of bites, one fish? Yeah, we had uh, two runs, landed one. Fish were crashing about all night. We've definitely got fish in front of us. Yeah, we're, we're pleased. 
It's, it's got a, a reasonable track record actually this bay, it produces a few fish, um, normally big ones but not a lot, but you only need three don't you? That's, that's the beauty of the event, this, this free big fish rule. So we, 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 we sort of like set out a plan because there's a lot, a lot of small fish out there. So what we've done is created a big, big baited, baited area that the fish, the small fish are busy, that they're out of our, and then all around the, the lake, different areas. That's where we're concentrating on uh, getting the big fish in. What's the what's the plan for the rest of the time? That you're just going to see how it goes. It's mainly going to be nighttime bites, I think, isn't it? Yeah, due, due to the weather and the depth of water, I think the, uh, the main activity is going to be nights. What we're going to do is concentrate and first of all, just get them free fish. The morning capture here, only a small fish, but one of the first daytime bites we've had in this year's World Carp Classic. And the fish is going through the weighing process now. The sling is put onto the scales put to zero, checked by both marshals and competitors alike, and then the fish is put back into the weigh sling, hung onto the very, very accurate spring balance that's up there. The dial will turn around and settle on the weight. Seven kilo, 100. First fish for Yanni Bolin, Martin Vilstrand, and Gert Samuelsen. First night, fish on the bank, great start for you. Yep, brilliant. We um, we obviously, as you know, we were sort of been asked swim from the off, so we uh, <coughs> found our spots after about three, four hours. Yeah, fun. Not as many as we were hoping for. It's, it's not, you know, it's quite very local. Um, but yeah, so it's given us a lot of confidence having one. There's a few fish up here, isn't there? Yeah, it seems yeah. like it. I think the guys in 23 have had one of those in 20. It's very weedy out there, something we wasn't um, sort of predicting, was we? Yeah. You yeah. know, there's muddy bits, you know, nothing too spectacular, but as long as there's a few fish about, then I think there should be a few out of this area, right? Well, hopefully hopefully, hopefully more of oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a few bigger ones as well. Quality, well, Taj, on the board this early in the game. Yep. What's your secret? Don't tell them, Tatch. Don't tell them, Tatch. Don't tell them, very vague. Listen to these two. The single sweet corn ones, you can tell them about that one. Single, yeah. single grain. Popped up sweet corn. Yeah, yeah. popped five, up sweet corn. Five yards out. Five yards out. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Spot it with maggots. Yeah, that's the only secret given. Yeah, thanks. Didn't even use a clip, did we, for the maggots? No. So, 24 hours in and the scores look like this. Top of the tree is Thomas Muller and Stephen Freeman with that one fish of 23.1 kilos. They're being chased though. Five teams with good fish to report and another four days of competition left. Well, I'm out on the water now and I'm gonna take you for a little run around Medine to show you exactly what the lake is like and what the anglers are up against. Now, for a start, the lake is 1,200 hectares in size, which is a little over two and a half thousand acres, and it's situated in the Meuse region of France, around about the Metz Nancy area. It's a reservoir, so it's man-made. It was built in 1960s, but it's not an irrigation or a drinking reservoir. It's actually a sporting reservoir and just for water storage. So unlike some of the other big ones like the Orient and Lac du Dare, the water level doesn't really fluctuate too much. There isn't that much of a draw off. It's really, really interesting when you look at it from the air, there's one big horseshoe area which goes all the way across the two dam walls. And at the other end, there's loads of little finger bays, trees and forests all the way around. And there's lots and lots of nature. In fact, yesterday, I actually saw an osprey come down and take a fish off the surface. So it's a magnificent place to be. Now, the fishing is very different depending on where you are. Being shallow, probably the maximum depth down by the dam is about 20 feet, but it is about two to three meters across the majority of the area. And in the bays, it's a little bit shallower still. There's a lot of weed in it. The base underneath is clay, so the anglers will be donking around looking for slightly harder patches where they can present their baits. There's a big island that runs up the middle of the lake as well. That takes quite a few people. Two of the long sides are 
occasionally productive, but it's the far end generally that they want to get into, into that woods area, because at the top of the woods area, there's a bay that's normally a natural nature reserve, and at this time of year, that's where the fish tend to migrate to. The bird hide area, that has a good pedigree too. That produces quite a few fish, and we've seen over the last few years, lots of fish come from there. And the bay, just by the side of that, that produces big ones now and again too. And then, of course, we've got the down wall area. There will be one or two fish around there that are resident and patrol up and down that area, but you need a bit of wind, a bit of life, and a bit of something going on to get this open water fishing. For me, I think with the way the weather's been recently, it's going to be the bays, the shallower areas, and those quiet channels. That's where the big fish are going to be coming from. I just don't think there's enough ignition in the weather to make the open water fish. The sun is starting to set out here at World Cup Classic number 20. What a brilliant day it's been. We've actually had quite a bit of action through the course of the day, sometimes from catfish, others from small carp, but the big ones are now starting to feed just like they did last night. I'm in peg 15, which as you can see, it's one of the bays yet again. The wind is blowing across now. We're getting some cloud cover. The temperature is dropping and it feels really, really carpy. There will be fish caught tonight without any shadow of a doubt. And we've just had an 18.6 kilo here for the Sturks family. And oh my word, what a fish it was. Just look at this common, absolutely cracking. And that rockets them right to the top of the leaderboard in this section. But we're just hearing some cheers. About five minutes ago, we got some cheers from the far bank over there. Now that is the area known as the dark side and we've just heard that a 24 kilo fish has been caught over there. Now that is between 51 and 52 pounds. We don't know exactly what the weight is yet but that will be the biggest fish and it will be the second 50 that's been caught here in a little over 24 hours. There's another big fish being caught off the island. That's a 20 kilo plus fish and one or two small ones all over the place as well. So it's really getting exciting and just remember guys the way this competition works is it's a big three event only three fish count catch 10 fish if you want your biggest three are the ones that go on the leaderboard so all those guys that fish for seven and eight kilo fish that's not really going to matter you need to sit tight you need to show that you can catch big fish and anything 18 and a half 19 kilo plus that will make a difference to the leaderboard we think that you're going to need 63 kilos to 67 kilos is my opinion. Talking to some of the other guys, they think the fish have grown since last year and it might even be a 70 kilo year. So 23, 23, 24 kilo, that would get you up there. So anybody that's getting 18 and a half plus, they're gonna be in the race, but really you need 20 kilo. Carol Nickel. Jakob Kumster and Jan Dadak. Absolutely fantastic fish that. That's a really, really nice looking mirror carp. Virtually no scales on it at all. And this will rocket the boys right to the very top of the table. Chat to them a minute ago and they, uh, they said actually an early lead isn't necessarily a good lead, but my view is that if you're at the top, everybody's got to try and pass you. So always a nice place to be. Guys, what are you thinking at the moment? It looks good actually. You know, we, we didn't know after the draw if the peg's going to be going to be good or not, but the weather is all right and the fish are in front of us. We will just have to find out how many and how big. A lot of fish in the bays at the moment. They seem to be more, more popular with fish in the bays rather than out in the main open water. It looks like that now and the, the, the weather plays in our mm. favour. So let's see. Let's hope for, for the best. Peg 88 now. And this is a fantastic common of 18.1 kilo. That's around about 40 pound for the German pairing of Stefan Oberhauser and Max Brandmeier. First carp of the competition for them that will go onto the scoreboard and this is a traditional and typical Medine fish very very big in the shoulder big high back slung slightly towards the rear end and a lot of the older fish here at Medine have these very small fins quite a small tail some of them have small pectoral fins and it's uh, typical of a heavy weeded fish one of the old originals beautiful creature and the guys will be very happy with that yesterday nice. we lost one and this night and that's my at the same time at my first Medine carp I'm so happy yes <laughs> <sighs> Well, it's first thing in the morning, 
now and we're just having reports of a really big fish that's been caught up at the far end of the lake. Now we have to get round it by road just to give you some sort of perspective about how big this lake is. It's 46 kilometres all the way around it and to get from one end to the other end by car takes between 15 and 20 minutes. Now the report has just come in, we're all in HQ and the report's come in that a really big fish has been caught at the Mont Sec end which is about as far away from our HQ as you can possibly get but we want to get out there as quickly as possible and see this fish. It's being weighed at the moment, they think it's going to be around about 25 kilos. You can hear the phone ding in there, everything goes mad when a big fish is caught everywhere and it's really 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 exciting. So the media convoy is out, the judges will be out there looking at what's going on as well. There's another crew going the other way to find out what's happening at the other end of the lake. But this has come from the bay which is the same area that that big fish came from last night. The area that the Czech guys caught from in peg 40. This is four pegs further down that bank, it's peg 44. It's their first big fish but it will put them well and truly in the race for the biggest fish of the tournament so far. We think it's 25k, we'll get that confirmation very very soon. And this is it, 25.2 kilos for Jakob Backer, Hendrik Boss and Albert Barson from Holland. Peg 44 and what an absolutely stunning creature it is. Typical and traditional Medine old big fish. You can see the shape of the head, the angle going up to those shoulders. And just absolutely beautiful. Anybody watching this at home will look at these and if you're ever wondering what continental carp fishing is about, this is it, a big fish from a beautiful wild lake, absolutely stunning. What's well, a brilliant start, you've had a few runs as well. Yeah, we had uh, six runs in total now, but we only catch one. <laughs> What's the problem? Lots of snakes in the water and uh, are, uh, I have three with snakes and there's a big weed bed on it and the, uh, the fish is behind the, the old river and the old river is it's the deep close deep. Finally, after four uh, loss uh, we catch the one and after that one we uh, lost also uh, two uh, fish. Now that fish, if you can catch another two decent fish, two 20 kilo fish, then you could well be in with a chance of winning this. You know, you're going to need 60, 63 kilos, I think, and a 25 kilo fish is a very, very good start. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. And we know that they are over here because uh, when you uh, listen at night, you hear them jumping, you see them jumping, and they are on the, on the bank. So we are positive for the coming three nights. Only we need to uh, figure out uh, how we get uh, the fish uh, out of the weed. So what's the plan? Are you going to put poly balls or are you yeah, going to put bottles yeah. on? Definitely yeah. poly balls and uh, maybe bottles, if they not. But uh, yeah, we need the tactics so it, the, the fish come up, maybe a lead drop, and then uh, well, we see later. We're back at the World Carp Classic 2018 and it's the 2016 champions, Carol Nickel, Jan Dadak and Jakob Kumster that have taken an early lead with their second big fish of the tournament. Just want to get technical now and I'd like to see the rig you're using. Can you tell us something about it? Uh, in the past we're fishing, they are not just grass, even snakes somewhere. From that reason, from very first beginning I'm using this thick strip mix 45 pounder coated even the hook is quite big, it's uh, size number four. It's strong hook, so it should hold even if it's in the snack. We had two fish at the morning, both of them found the snack, so we needed to use the archer. We successfully landed both fish and all materials were solid. It was a very similar story like last year, we were taking the shots from the open water. We were also in the snack using the archer, so that was almost similar battle. This length of the hair I'm using because of better hooking the hook in the mouth, better angle. And you can hide the hook with the boilie. Also with the help of mouse nagger, it's better angle. It's very important for me because externing the hooks, the edge down. It's turning by the edge straight in the cart mount. 
Around the rest of the lake, the day was quiet and most of the fish came out through the hours of darkness. It was a bit of a case of sitting, waiting and hoping, but suddenly we heard of a rare daytime capture. It was the checks again, and this fish of 18.7 kilograms put them right at the top of the leaderboard at the halfway stage. 52.2 kilograms, three fish, and it's for Carol Nickel, Jan Dadak, and Jakob Kumster, runners up last year, champions of the year before. Peg 24, 52.21, so it's close there with three fish for Julian Kellart, Jonathan Roth, and Michael Roth. And then the battle continues 48.5, 41.8, and then 33.7. Three fish for the top five, it's getting close. Well, it's been a really exciting day out here at Lactamadeen on day three of the World Cup Classic and things are really, really starting to hot up now. We've got a game on our hands. There are a few teams now that have caught three fish and we saw a big push from one or two last night to put them right at the top of the tree. Starting at the top, well, it's the guys that won it two years ago at Nova Malinska and came runners up last year. Carol Nickel, Jan Dadak and Jakob Kumster. Brilliant performance, they're up in peg 40 right at the very end of that bay. They had a good fish last night, another good one this morning and then in the middle of the afternoon when we thought nobody was going to catch anything at all they go and pull it out of the bag and caught an absolute monster that rockets them to the top of the tree they're looking really really good but all is not yet over two other teams are chasing them on the dark side peg 24 we've got julian kellett jonathan roth and michael roth from france they have had three big fish 14 and a half 18.1 and 19 and a half kilos so that puts them well and truly in the chasing pack then third place belgium guys on peg 82 they are over on the island frederick van reisenham christian gilbert and Laurence mortelay an 18 a 14 and a 13.6 gives them plenty of room to catch another big one and push for that overall leader there are also a couple of other movers too in peg 50 last year's winning swim fish last night another one today two good fish puts them just hanging back off the leaderboard but remember this happened last year with the germans on the island as well everyone's looking at the top ones they're not looking at the guys that have caught two good ones and are waiting for their third one one fish of 22 kilos for peg 50 you know what they're at the top of the pile and then we've got to talk about the lads from New Zealand and Australia 23,000 kilometers they've traveled to get here they came last year it blew them away the size the ferocity the weather conditions but they learned they came back this year they're on the island they've drawn a half decent peg and they are fishing it incredibly well they'll be gutted they lost their first opportunity because since then they've caught two really really big fish and one more for them over 20 kilos you know what that puts them in one of those podium slots and if it's a good one they will be at the top of the tree it's all to play for we're not quite halfway through the competition yet we're promised another day like today tomorrow bit of cloud cover bright skies reasonable wind but then the weather will change we've got a twist coming towards the end of the world cup classic it's going to get wet it's going to get windy and the big question is will that turn the fishing on will it turn it off Will it make the open water fish or will it pull those fish out of the bays? Only time will tell, but what I can tell you is it is game on. Action now in peg 84. And they had a quiet night last night but as soon as it gets dark lo and behold the fish start to feed and we've arrived just at a really interesting time because they've just landed one fish we must change a new new spot and this is the result it's off the new spot no yes, it's the same spot from yesterday uh, from the, the first uh, even the first fish but the weed is gone i can't fish there ah, okay. another. yesterday i can't fish there yeah so there was the weed on on it because the wind blows the weed on my spot yeah but yeah. now the wind is off it so you can fish again yes and the weed is okay well absolute excitement throughout the course of the night as it got dark it was check that we're in the lead but you know what we had a call last night just a little bit too late to get out onto the island that the guys from New Zealand in peg 76 had had a good fish we thought in the morning we'll shoot over there and see exactly what it was 
but it's about to get light now. The sun is rising in the east over the small dam wall at Medin, and the call has come through again. They've got another one, but this time, this is an absolute monster. It's taken the scales all the way around the dial on the first way, so we're on our way over with an even bigger set of scales to find out exactly how big this fish is. It's a dream come true for the guys from New Zealand. They battled last year through the elements, loved the event so much that they've come back again this year for another go. Their peg choice is brilliant. Their fishing tactics are magnificent. If they were in the lead last night, they're going to be even further ahead very soon. Oh my word, look at that. So the scales are just being zeroed at the moment. This is obviously really, really important. This is certainly a 25 <laughs> kilo plus fish by a long way. So, Marius there, just testing the guns as he lifts that creature. You see the fish comes out, it gets put into this unhooking mat as we call it. Use the muscles, man. There's the other one to go on as well. 27.2 kilos, biggest fish of the competition to date here at Medina in World Cup Classic. 20 and this will put the guys even further in the lead. They took the lead last night. They've extended it now. We'll do the mathematics and the calculations in a moment, but for the time being, let's just have a look at this magnificent creature. Give the guys the opportunity to lift it up and show everybody at home what a big Medine carp looks like. Absolute dream come true for the guys. They've traveled such a long way from overseas to come here. I mean, I've traveled 57,000 kilometers, you know, to land my first Medine carp, and it was, <laughs> I was just, screaming like a girl on that boat <laughs> when, <laughs> when we when we needed a, the first carp and um, yeah. The, the last one definitely, we were definitely going to try and replace or substitute the, the smaller two for something bigger. That's the goal for the next two days. We use the same strategy, all the days the same strategy and uh, in the and, and it works. beginning yeah. Yeah. to the end the yeah. same so strategy. Believe, believe in your strategy yeah. and stick to it. Yeah. Throughout the course of the day, we've seen that there's been very, very few fish caught. And today, there's been absolutely nothing at all. It's incredible. It looks really good. The weather's getting better. There's a little bit more breeze on the water, but we've still got this high temperature. We've got blue skies, but there is a change forecast for tomorrow. That may well have a big effect, but at the moment, I've got to say that those guys in 76, the New Zealanders, they're going to take an awful lot of catching, and tonight is going to be absolutely crazy crucial. And this is the leaderboard and at the top of the pile it is those guys from New Zealand with their co-opted French counterpart Thomas Thibord. Three fish, 69 kilos, that is an incredible weight. 58.2, 53.2, 50.8 and 48.5 make up the next four. It's going to be a big end to the competition and there is bound to be a drama. Just to give you an idea where these guys are, let's have a look at their pegs. First, second, third, fourth and fifth. That's where they are. Now let's see what the night holds. So this is it, two nights left and big fish are on the menu. It didn't take long before the first one was reported into headquarters and my word it was an important one. The Anglo-German pairing of Thomas Muller and Stephen Freeland had caught another monster. It was a mirror of 23.8, their biggest fish so far and it rocketed them up into second place. Yeah, come on baby. I think we're both trying to push it to the back of our minds basically because we're on a bus now, it's been a roller coaster but oh, don't leap that. I wouldn't bet against us. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah, it's looking Tom. good. We... <laughs> I think we have a lot of big fish in the front from us, and we catch one more. I think 22, 23, 24, 25 kilos, and we are on a lead. I hope, I hear, we must catch it. There's a bit of pressure. That's all. Yeah, there's a bit of pressure on you now, though, because the weather is due to change tomorrow. So tonight is really your best chance. Exactly. I think we've got a small window of opportunity, but the, our tactics. The fish have found our baited areas and they're feeding.
Incredibly, the night proved unproductive for all of the leading teams. Some of them caught fish, but they were just not big enough to make a change in the leaderboard. The dawn was calm, but the promised storm is on its way. The wind strengthened, the waves increased in size, and the fish started to feed, but not in the areas of the current leaders. New teams joined the hunt at the front of the pack, and the final day was to prove dramatic for the anglers of the World Cup Classic. Peg 22, a team from Poland, were the first call with a 21.6 kilogram fish. Shortly afterwards, it was the French in Peg 89 on the small island. They landed a 23.6, and then the Dutch in Peg 116 on the beach with another 23 kilo fish, this time 23.4. No one at the top is yet safe. tournament founder Ross Honey with me at the moment and Ross I've got to say you know I'm always always a fan of the World Cup Classic but this year it's just fantastic isn't it we've had everything and we're breaking records absolutely it's incredible it really is the 20th anniversary of the event Rob and uh, really just to see the the weather conditions which have been sunny you know people have been out you know, on the beach and swimming and now look at this I mean it's absolutely it's about as carp as you can get and the big fish are coming out and lots of them as well well that's three really really big fish this morning over 20 kilo in the space of four hours and it's quite interesting because this side nothing was coming out at all and then suddenly all those big fish have come on the end of the wind haven't they absolutely i mean it's it's been really interesting i mean up until now they've pretty much been in the bays and a lot of the pegs that really haven't caught fish before have produced and uh, great to see that the uh, you know the, the excitement in terms of the leaderboard and it's so unpredictable there's some really big fish being caught from all different areas i mean the the, the german team that are in second they've dropped down the french team moved up and then, then there's a swing around there there's big fish being caught here on the on the beach the small island and really everywhere now there's 12 hours left so not a lot of time in a 112 hour event but you know what it's only three fish that matter here now it's only those big three and there are plenty of people waiting to pounce for that top slot this is going to be an amazing and incredibly tense finish because we know already that most of the fish come out in the darkness normal service has resumed skies have cleared temperature is starting to drop for the night the wind is gone however in some pegs the weed is gone too get ready this is going to be a bumpy ride so let's have a quick recap on the scores and find out who is in the game well obviously in first place peg 76 second they need one fish of 22.1 kilos third and fourth it's a very big ask for them they need two very big fish the guys in fifth place peg 113 222 and a half kilos for them will put them in the game but there is a team just off the leaderboard in seventh place, Peg 89. They've got two fish so far for 47.8. They need one 21.3 kilo fish that will rocket them to the top. But of course, one or two big fish for anybody around this lake could put them right at the top. Well, you need 22.1, I think. And if you 22 get 22.1, 22.1 would be enough. It's possible. It's, uh, I mean, this lake, dreams can be made or broken, this lake it is, uh, really. But uh, I think at the moment, we're really trying to concentrate on keep, keeping second place more than first place because there's a lot of teams behind us and there's a lot of teams that could, p could potentially pick up 50 kilo tonight. The island, there's two teams there. They could quite easily get 225 kilo fish. Well, it's excitement here in Peg 50. We're out, it's the middle of the night and a really, really big fish has been caught. It's just about to be dealt with now. It's been put on the scales once already. It went over 27 kilos, so we know it's a big one. The big boy scales are out. How big is it exactly? We don't know, but we'll soon find out. Is it going to be a record for the World Carp Classic? Axel Wacker caught one 28.2 kilos from here a few years ago. He's held that record for a while. It's due to be broken, and tonight might well be the night. We're still a bit um, speechless, so wonderful moment also to the 20th anniversary and it's really really a great feeling amazing for us now as we saw on the board after many minutes we recognize that it's his birth date 29th of august and it is 29.8 really really fantastic we will see the night will goes on and hopefully we got another one last night nearly there, top of the pile, being chased. 
How do you feel? I think all of us are quite nervous at this stage. Um, we know that there's a lot of teams in with a shot at this stage and you know it can go any way. We, we're quite confident we could still catch a big one tonight still, but um, you know with this, this lake and the, the size of fish coming out at the moment, um, I think it's going to go down to the last minute. So that's it, it's the end of the road, the final chapter in what has been an incredible story out here at Lactamadine for the World Carp Classic. We're on our way out into the middle of the lake to the place that this event started nearly 112 hours ago. The rocket will be fired up at dawn, at sunrise to show the event is finished. The big question now is who is the winner? Well, what I can tell you is that the leaderboard has changed overnight. Somebody has caught a fish that does make a difference to the top three. A fish of 16.8 kilograms to add to the 29.8 monster rocketed Jasmine Schuster and Rene Joker into third place. It wasn't the only change. As had been predicted, Peg 89, Frank Martel and Thomas Adonis landed their third fish at 18.6 kilos to overtake Muller and Freeland and steal second. But it looked like the first place belonged to the New Zealand team. However, there was drama yet to come. And that is it. It's over. The flare signifies the end of the competition as the sun just rises here at Lac de Medine. What an incredible event it's been. And now we make our way to the winner's peg. We'll talk about a twist in the tail. We thought it was all over. And the flare was just about to be fired the rules of the competition are that if a fish is hooked before the end, they have 20 minutes to land it. So that's 20 minutes. And would you believe it, the call came through that the marshals watching the anglers on the lake, they said that there are two fish being played and one of them is to one of the teams at the top of the leaderboard. It's the guys in Peg 89, they were absolutely nowhere yesterday. And then that wind came in, they caught a couple of fish and we did make the prediction yesterday that if they have a big one, they could well take this title. Now. What happened? Well, they caught one last night. They caught a big one as well. It put them up into second. And they've just caught another one. They're playing it at the moment. We don't know how big it is. We're not sure exactly how big it has to be at the moment because we've got to find out what the other one is as well. And I've got to say that in all of the events that I've covered over the last 20 years, this is without any shadow of a doubt one of the most exciting finishes to a competition because the event has now ended, but we don't know who's won it could potentially be four different teams. Stewards inquiry, results are provisional. Wow, what a finish to this World Cup Classic. As soon as we saw the fish lifted out of the boat and carried to the unhooking mat, we realized that it wasn't going to be big enough. It would not affect the results. Peg 89 hadn't done enough. That was it, we were on our way to see the New Zealanders. This is it, we have got the new champions with us. What an absolutely amazing performance that was, gentlemen. What can we say, a fairy tale come true. I think it means a lot for us to win, but I think for, for the people in New Zealand and Australia, you know, you know supporting us and everything we, we're going through at the moment, trying to, to battle, you know, Koi Herpes virus, this whole thing just means so much more than just us winning for, um, you know, for Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, it's just a big disappointment this year. You know, we got a team together that we knew we had a chance with our team. And if we stick to the plan, we had a plan from day one. And every day we just adapt to the plan and we kept it simple and it was just amazing. We, we had it, we lost it, we had it and we lost it. And then yeah. we had it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And so too the presentation and the first prize to be collected was the team award. For the second year running it was won by Carp Aras. Carol Engel, Jan Ledet and Yubit Costa. You come forward, you are the team event winners of the World Cup Classic 2018. Next came the biggest fish of the tournament and what a fish it was. A new World Cup Classic record of 29.8 kilos. Thank you.
It was amazing. It was spectacular. It was, when you saw that fish, it was amazing. As well as the biggest fish, Austrians Jasmine Schuster and René Joker took third place overall. Second went to the Franco-Belgian team of Frank Martel and Thomas Adonis. And then, of course, the very popular winners. New Zealand had done it. Thank you. Uh, it was just, uh, it was just unbelievable. The 2018 World